Hello everyone. This is Dr. Shweta Jain from Aymanta Hospital. We usually talk about various conditions related to eyes in our videos. Today we are going to tell you about a condition that every one of us usually faces, but hardly a few people know about the same. So in this video we are going to cover the following things. What is telegium? What are the symptoms of telegium? What are the causes of telegium? What are the risk factors associated with this disease? What are the treatment options available? and what is the recurrence rate after pterygium surgery so let us start with the meaning of pterygium pterygium is a raised wedge shaped lump on the eyeball that begins on the white of the eye called sclera and can extend till the cornea pterygia is a plural version of the word if you have more than one of these eye growth you don't have to be a surfer or have ever seen the ocean to develop a pterygium despite its common name However, spending lengthy periods of time in direct sunshine, especially when on water, which reflects the sun's damaging UV rays, increases your risk. Pterygia are benign, non-cancerous growth that can disfigure the eyes. They can also make you feel uncomfortable and cause your eyesight to blur. The development of pink mushy tissue on the white of the eye called sclera that encroaches on the cornea, the clear window at the front of the eye, characterizes this rather frequent disease. Pterygium is always found on the side of the nose nearest to it. It is typically non-toxic and does not necessitate treatment. It should be removed if it is progressive and growing in size since it can eventually obstruct vision and create substantial scarring. Moving on to the symptoms of the eye problem. There are many evident signs that mark the onset of pterygium. Pterygium most commonly affects the side of the eye closest to the nose, although it can also affect the side closest to the ear. it can affect one or both eyes many people with moderate surfer's eye have no symptoms and don't need therapy large or developing pterygia on the other hand can create a gritty itchy or burning sensation as well as the sense that something is in the eye called the foreign body sensation in addition these pterygia frequently gets inflamed resulting in unsightly red eyes A substantial invasion of the cornea by the pterygium can alter the curvature of the front surface of the eye, resulting in astigmatism and higher order abrasions that impair vision. There are many people who fail to detect these signs and symptoms of pterygium. Moving ahead with the possible causes of the disease, although UV light from the sun appears to be one of the major causes of pterygium formation and growth, other factors like dust and wind, as well as dry eye illness, have been suggested. Pterygia is most common in people between the ages of 30 and 50 and these lumps on the eyeball are rarely observed in youngsters. If you have light skin and light eyes, you are more likely to develop a pterygia. Now the most awaited part of the video that is the treatment. A stable condition is usually innocuous and can be left untreated. If there is any discomfort, lubricating eye drops will be used to provide symptomatic relief. It's crucial to keep an eye on your disease since it might worsen and damage your eyesight in the future even if it's not bothering you right now. To temporarily relieve swelling and redness, your eye doctor may give lubricants or a mild steroid eye drops if the pterygium is tiny. Contact lenses are occasionally worn over the growth to shield it from the consequences of dryness and in certain cases additional UV exposure. Dry eyes can also be treated with topical cyclosporin. Some people are disturbed by the aesthetic look even when there is no effect on the eyesight. Surgery may be necessary for both aesthetic and visual reasons. Pterygium removal can be done in an operating room. It's crucial to keep in mind that removing a pterygium might cause astigmatism especially in those who already have it. Pterygium removal surgery generally takes no more than 30 minutes after which you will most likely need to wear an eye patch for a day to safeguard your eyes. The next day you should be able to return to work or usual activities. It will be surgically removed if it is obstructing your eyesight. If surgery is required, it is usually done locally depending on the size and location of the pterygium as well as your personal preference. Your surgeon will remove the pterygium with micro instruments. There are two main techniques which are followed. First, bare sclera technique. The bare sclera technique involves simply excising the pterygium while leaving the bare sclera bed to re-epithelize on its own. High recurrence rates between 24% and 89% have been documented in various reports. Second, conjunctival autograft technique. The procedure involves obtaining an autograft, filling the space left by the pterygium with the tissue 
from nearby normal conjunctiva. The graft tissue is usually taken from the world of attention that is hidden behind the eyelid. The graft is either glued or stitched into the place using sutures that disintegrate after a few weeks following the procedure. Conjunctival autografting, as the procedure is known, is presently the most successful way to do the operation. It decreases the chances of pterygium recurrence to less than 5%, which is most frequent complication associated with pterygium surgery. This is everything that you need to know about the treatment of pterygium. Now comes the recurrence rate of the disease. Pterygia frequently recurs following surgical excision, presumably because of the oxidative stress and or continuous UV exposure. Recurrence rates as high as 40% have been recorded in some studies, while recurrence rate as low as 5% has been reported in others. Your eye surgeon may sew or glue a portion of the surfer eye tissue onto the efficient region to prevent the recurrence after the pterygium is surgically removed. This procedure, known as autologous conjunctival autografting, have been demonstrated to lower the risk of recurrence in a safe and effective manner. Mitomycin C, a medication that can help prevent aberrant tissue development and scarring during the wound healing, can also be used topically to lower the chance of pterygium recurrence during surgery and or thereafter. The doctor will most likely prescribe steroid eye drops for many weeks after the pterygium is removed to reduce the swelling and prevent a recurrence. In addition to taking your drops, it's crucial to protect your eyes from the sun following surgery with UV blocking sunglasses or photochromatic lenses, as UV exposure may play a role in pterygium reoccurrence. This is everything that you need to know about pterygium. I hope you have extracted some valuable knowledge from this video. If you've ever experienced the same, do let us know in the comment section below. If you like this video, then hit the like button and subscribe to our channels for more informative notes about the eyes. Also share this informative video with your family and friends. Thank you.